Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for coming along again. This is part three in a series of videos that I've done. Part one was based on the preparation that I do for all my offshore jet ski fishing trips. Part two was the actual day out. Good catches that day. I hope you've seen that video. This one, part three, not as quite as exciting for some people, but it's about the cleanup that I have to do for my wave runner and my equipment after every trip. So stand by, watch the video. If you've got any comments, put them down below and I hope you'll watch the video right through. Let's get into it. So first of all, I like to park the ski on my driveway. It's got enough incline to allow the water to drain. So um, if not, if you don't have a driveway to park on, you can put it on flat grass on your lawn perhaps and um, use something like a heavy bucket to put under the jockey wheel so you can raise the ski up. The idea of course is to open the bungs so any water that goes into the hole it will drain out the rear. The first thing I generally do too is to get all the fishing gear and any other accessories out of the ski so I can clean it properly and of course I also want to clean those accessories so I'll uh, put my rods up against the hedges here, I'll hang up my PFD and my wetsuit I'll also take the seats off the ski and put them over the side on their edges so that I can clean them properly as well. You have to be pretty careful with the seats so you don't actually damage the corners when you sand them up. But you know the water always drains through the seats to the to those little front corners, so that's why I put them on their edge. Any of the metal lures or rigs that I've used throughout the day need a bit of a rinse as well so they don't rust between trips. So I'll lay those out on the driveway in my case and make sure that I give them a good rinse as well. Okay, so all the gears out of the ski. So the first thing I'm going to do is flush the engine. I generally like to flush the engine first. So I'll leave the hose turned off, attach it correctly to the Wave Runner's flush port. And of course, it's very important to start the engine first before turning any water on. If you do it the wrong way around, you run the risk of water being forced into the engine and causing all sorts of problems. So start the engine, turn the hose on at the tap or valve quickly after that and then keep an eye on the front water pump exit to make sure that water's coming out. If there's nothing coming out of there after about 10 seconds, you can try giving the engine a really low rev. Uh, if it's still not any water coming out, I'd suggest turning the water off, turning the engine off, checking your water pressure. There could be a chance that you've got a kink in the hose and the water pressure is just too low to uh, get up through the engine. So assuming you have the water pumping out correctly, Run the engine on the hose to the manufacturer's recommended minimum and maximum times and then turn the water off first, of course. I then give the engine a quick rev, just nothing over about 4,500 RPMs and then turn off the engine. The idea of the rev is to remove water from the exhaust area. Many people will use a salt removing product like Salt Away or Saltex for both flushing and cleaning the ski. That's fine, I don't see the need to do it every time as long as you're, you're flushing the ski properly. But in my case, I use the ski very regularly. So if you're not gonna be using the ski as often as I do, I would recommend using those products every flush, every clean of the ski, because they have some corrosion inhibiting properties. Next, I just rinse everything well, paying attention to anywhere salt water can get in or cool. On rougher days, the salt water tends to get into the hole via the front hatch or through any sort of open sections in the hull. For instance, in my Wave Runner, the cup holders in the ski actually have some slits where water can get in and the water will then drain into the inside of the hull. Most of it gets ejected as you're riding, but some of it's probably splashed around on your bottom of your engine or any, any other metal parts. Make sure you remove the rear bungs, of course, and then adjust your hose to a fine mist and give the entire engine bay a quick spray. Pay special attention to the rear exhaust chamber as well. The jet ski's pump, of course, is in the salt water all day, so it needs special attention. Give it a really good rinse down. Make sure you re remove any sand that might even be sitting in the ride plate. Get right under, also under the ski, and spray some water into the intake rate to make sure that the entire pump has been well rinsed. And of course, then don't forget to give the trailer a good dousing, paying attention to any of the hollow sections that may dip into the water or carry water. I also spray the winch area really well because that's definitely going to be holding some salt water after retrieving the ski. I'll also use a good car wash shampoo to give the outside of the ski a pretty good clean, especially if I've caught some fish because you'll find slime, blood, scales, etc. Um, all over your ski 
and the uh, shampooing it's going to help get rid of all that for you and keep it looking as good as new. So after a, a thorough rinsing of the entire ski then I'll use a chamois or a thick cloth to dry the ski down. My fishing gear also gets a similar treatment because they're always going to get salt water on them when you're out fishing. I make sure the drags are reasonably tight on my reels and then I'll give them a good misting spray of water. I then wipe them dry and use a reel oil. You could use sprays too like Lanox that have some corrosion inhibiting properties to give it a little light spray around the metal parts on your reel. Then of course wipe that down a bit, loosen the drags again and then store them. Manufacturers always recommend the use of a fogging oil on the metal parts inside the hull in your ski and, and also on the exterior. Just got to be very careful with what you use there. Uh, I've used Lanox and there's some other specialty products from uh, various manufacturers that are designed for this. Just be very careful about spraying them on any of the rubber or plastic parts. Uh, even the best of these sprays can loosen the adhesive on the electrical insulation tape used in your ski's electrical systems uh, and also through the battery systems. I've even had the rubber gasket in my bungs deteriorate um, due to the sprays and cause a leak into my hull. So just be very careful. Rubber and plastic doesn't take well to any of the sprays. Now the hull's always going to have some water in it even after you've rinsed it and drained it so I use a cheap uh, wet dry vacuum unit and remove as much water as the hull as possible. To keep my ski in top condition I've always stored it in the shade. In my case I've got a garage. If you don't have a garage to store it I'd consider renting a storage shed or getting a very good cover. The problem with covers is that the ski needs to be very dry before you cover it or else the sun's going to turn it into a nice greenhouse. You run the chance of the ski deteriorating far quicker, getting mold build up, up on the seats or worse. So I always store my ski with everything open up, in the shade, seats off, front hatch, glove box open, and my tubby hatch open. I always dry my seats in the shade on their ends to let the water drain out of the corners. I use a flat bucket as a platform to avoid the seat corners getting damaged on the ground. So that's about it guys, um, ski stowed, everything's away, I've had a shower, feeling nice and fresh, time to go to bed, of course I've had enough now after a long day on the water and hopefully those tips will help you when you come back from your next fishing trip. Don't forget I did part one and two of this video, uh, the prep of the ski, part two being the actual day out in the water, so make sure you see those as well. If you have any comments about the cleanup or any of the videos in this series, put them down below there. If you're new to the channel and you're liking what you see, you want to see some more, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up and the likes there, and um, feel free to put comments down below as well. Say hello, even tell us where you're from. Thanks again, see you next time.